and welcome to Cisco ACI, what is a bridge domain? Bridge domains are probably one of the more confusing aspects of Cisco ACI as uh, ACI introduces a number of new, um, or not really new, but different uh, network constructs. And one of those is the bridge domain. And I think it's confusing because there's not a real good analog, or at least one has been presented as an analog into the, uh, in the traditional networking world of VLANs and SVIs. So, um, but there actually is one. Um, so in this uh, little presentation, we're going to talk about what a, what a bridge domain is and why there is. So um, we're going to concentrate on what as well as why. Why do we have a bridge domain? All right. So in traditional networking, we've got, um, we've got a default gateway. So we have layer three. Let's change the color here. So we've got layer three and we've got layer two. Layer two is primarily VLANs and layer three is uh, routers or a lot of times they're actually SVIs on multi-layer switches. So that's what we've got. Now take the concept of VLANs. Um, there is another additional concept with VLANs called a private VLANs. So uh, with a private VLAN you'll have what's known as a primary VLAN So here's my primary, maybe that's VLAN 5. And then we can have these secondary VLANs inside. So this will be VLAN 10, this will be VLAN 20. And we can use this to share a, a, a network, a share a subnet, so share a layer 3 network. So maybe the primary VLAN is an SVI and we've got 10, 1, 1, 1, slash 24. So it's a class C sized network slash 24. And I've got a host inside of VLAN 10. That's 10, 1, 1, 11. And 10, 1, 1, 12. Actually, it makes that 13. And then 10, 1, 1, 12 is in VLAN 20. By default, um, secondary VLANs are isolated from each other. So there is no communication between the two but they can both communicate with the promiscuous port, or in this case it would be an interface VLAN, uh, SVI, and provide some additional security, uh, especially for a DMZ, or you can do a multi-tenant environment where you have uh, maybe VLAN 10 is Coke, and VLAN 20 is Pepsi, and you can put them on the same uh, layer three network and they can't interfere with each other, they should not not be able to interfere with each other. So. Um, that concept's been around for a while. We don't tend to use it in data center networking because um, primarily just because of uh, orchestration. I've got these, uh, it's going to greatly increase the number of VLANs that you have, and you've got to make sure that they're synced and trunked across all of your switches. And a lot of sites have decided that that's not, that's not um, uh, worth it. Um, additional complexity, bit of troubleshooting, et cetera. We also have the uh, concept of an isolated uh, private VLAN. So this would, let's say 10 was isolated, VLAN 10. And um, the hosts inside each other could not talk to each other either. So they could only talk to the outside world. So that's popular for, for, for DMZs sometimes as well. So now we've, got, now we've got the concept of a bridge domain. In ACI, you can consider a bridge domain, we'll call it bridge domain DMZ, well, first off, quick recap. Um, in ACI, we've got a couple of new uh, concepts in networking. Well, not really new, but um, not seen in networking generally, uh, at least not widespread. We have the concept of a tenant. ACI was built from the ground up to be a multi-tenant environment. So you can have Coke and Pepsi and, and so forth inside of ACI. And then every tenant is going to have at least one VRF. When ACI first came out, they were called context or private layer three networks. Um, but generally, colloquially, now we call them uh, VRFs in uh, the 2.0 and 2.1 and 2.2 code. Uh, so and I think that's probably what's going to continue to be called is uh, VRFs. Um, but private network um, and context are the same concept. And then under a VRF, we'll have one or more bridge domains. So let's create a bridge domain here. We'll call this bridge domain DMZ. Underneath a bridge domain is where we're going to have multiple subnets. So that's where our networks go. Uh, so this one will be 10111 slash 24. 
And in ACI, we use any cast gateways in our leaf and spine, and they exist on the leaves, not the spines. In traditional networking, um, we'd have our default gateways up here. Um, in ACI, the default gateways exist on every leaf. So if I had 10, 1, 1, 1, if I had a host plugged into that leaf down there, so I'll just draw the interconnections, every leaf generally will plug into every spine. And generally, you only plug things into leaves. So these are the spines. These are the leaves or leaves. I've seen it spelled both ways. I'm going to use leaves. And uh, let's say I had two hosts. This one was 10, 1, 1, uh, 13. And this one was 10, 1, 1, 14. When they both art for their default gateway, who has 10, 1, 1, 1, the individual leaf will respond. So 10.1.1 exists on all leaves where there are hosts for that network attached. So um, this is, we call this pervasive SVI or pervasive gateway. So, and that's configured underneath a bridge domain. So we, we've got our bridge domain here. And then instead of bridge domains, we'll have one or more what we call endpoint groups or EPGs. So this will be EPG, call this web maybe. And this will be EPG, call that database. So what is an EPG? An EPG is a grouping of servers that are related to each other for policy. So for access policy, connectivity policy, etc. To the outside world, they are a combination of interface and VLAN, or an interface and encapsulation, I should say. Go back to that. Intercase, interface and encap. And this one is also a combination of interface and encapsulation. So we, we can actually have overlapping encapsulations depending on the, the configuration. Um, but here's the thing. Um, a bridge domain, you can consider a primary VLAN. And then the 10.1.1.1 here, the, the network, you can consider that either an SVI or a promiscuous port or however you want to conceive it or conceptualize it. Um, but think of the bridge domain as the primary VLAN. Think of an EPG as a secondary VLAN. So this will probably be something like VLAN 10, and this will be VLAN 20, and then this will be on Ethernet 1, 2 on LEAF 101, and this will be Ethernet 1, 1 on LEAF 101. So, um, and this could be attached to a, a distributed virtual switch or just a regular V switch in VMware or a physical host or could be containers, doesn't really matter. So this begs the question, why did Cisco go through all the trouble of calling it a bridge domain and EPG when they could have just used primary VLAN and secondary VLAN? Well, the answer is we're no longer dealing with a world of just VLANs. So there is two types of encapsulations that we have in ACI. We have VXLAN and we have VLAN. Now, there's a bit of confusion about how VXLAN is used in ACI. There's actually two different types of VXLAN used in ACI. One of them is called IVXLAN. And IVXLAN is the encapsulation that is used inside of the fabric. It is not a VXLAN that you're going to see ever leave the fabric. Nothing that is connected to a host or to an external network or either layer two or layer three is going to have an IVXLAN header. So this is just internal. Think of it like a chassis switch. As soon as a packet enters in a, in a chassis switch, and even a regular switch, uh, even a non-chassis switch, uh, when a packet enters a switch, it gets an additional header. You don't know about that header. That header is hidden from you. In fact, in a chassis switch, there's probably some sort of routing protocol going from, the, uh, from, one, leaf, or from one line card to another line card and all sorts of, of magic that goes on inside, um, encapsulations and so forth, uh, that happen inside of the switch that never leave the switch. So by the time a packet leaves the switch, that those headers are stripped. That's true for IVXLAN. ACI is also capable of dealing with standard IETF VXLAN. So this is the standardized VXLAN that all the vendors are using. So it's IEEE VLAN, so IEEE handles VLANs, IETF handles VXLANs, 
um, we're not dealing with VLANs anymore as the as the only encapsulation. Now, I will have to say though that 95, 99% of all ACI installations today use just VLANs for external connectivity. Um, but we're seeing more and more VXLAN for, for things like vSwitches in Hyper-V or in OpenStack. Um, and even we're gonna start seeing it more, I think in the, in the VMware world. But either way, we can't call it a primary and secondary VLAN because VLANs, uh, that's, not the, that's not the only type of end cap anymore. So this EPG could also be, instead of a, a, a VLAN, it could be, uh, let's say, native VXLAN uh, 20001. And that way we can normalize the encapsulations. One of the ideas of ACI is, is Cisco said, you know what, we're going to start seeing more than one encapsulation. We need to normalize it. So when a packet enters in the ACI fabric, whatever encapsulation that that packet had or that frame had is going to get stripped. And then the IVX line encapsulation is going to get added. It's going to get routed inside of the fabric. The, uh, and then the appropriate encapsulation will be added uh, um, externally. For example, if this is a VXLAN encapsulated packet, and this is a VLAN encapsulated uh, packet or encapsulated frame. Frame will enter the switch. The, v the IETF VXLAN header will be removed. Let's use some colors here to, to indicate. Uh, so VX, IETF VXLAN will be purple here. Goes up into the leaf. That is removed. The IVXLAN, which will be represented in red, is how the packet gets routed through the fabric. And then we're going to use yellow for standard VLAN. The, IE, the IVX LAN header gets removed and then a standard IET, uh, IEEE VLAN header gets uh, added and then sent down to the, to the host there. So that is why we have bridge domains. Um, it's a very similar concept to what you're used to, primary and secondary VLANs. We can even do an isolated EPG so that the host inside of the EPG can't talk to each other. You can use that in conjunction with uh, VMware to create a port group that's isolated. So uh, the reason why we have um, bridge domains in ACI is because uh, they're essentially primary VLANs, but we can't call them primary VLANs because uh, VLANs are not the encapsulation that we're using anymore, or not the only encapsulation that we're using anymore. Um, one more quick thing. There was a third encapsulation, or in this case a fourth, called NVGRE. Uh, it was on the roadmap for ACI. It has been dropped primarily because uh, the only vendor that was using NVGRE is, is Microsoft. Um, so Microsoft helped create M NVGRE along with Cisco and Arista, and they've decided to drop it in favor of VXLAN. So Microsoft is now using VXLAN instead of, uh, instead of NVGRE or in addition to. So they've decided to drop uh, NVG NVGRE support because it's pretty much not gonna get used uh, in the data center. I think Microsoft probably uses it internally for Azure or whatever, but in terms of data center technologies, it's pretty much VXLAN and VLAN now. So I hope this clears some stuff up. Again, my name is Tony Burke. You can find me on Twitter at T Burke, and I uh, blog and, and post these videos on datacenteroverlords.com. Hope you enjoyed.